Welcome back to My Car Shop. Today we're back on the 26 Oakland project. We're going to be continuing to move forward on getting the parts cleaned up and reassembling more on the engine to get it ready to fire up. Let's watch the show intro and I will see you in 30 seconds. Working out of a 100 year old refurbished barn bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. So as I mentioned here in the intro, we're back on the 26 Oakland project again. I try to work on this car every Friday, and uh, sometimes I get things filmed, sometimes I don't. But uh, we have to get the uh, coolant passages in the head cleaned out. I need to get the oil pan cleaned out. I want to get the timing cover cleaned up one more time, and I need to check the oil feed uh, out of the engine onto the uh, timing chain to make sure that that's feeding properly. Uh, so we'll probably unthread that and just blow that passage out. Uh, make sure that that's not filled up with sludge. Uh, but we are really close to being able to fire this car up after 75 years. Uh, so a few of the next steps that need to happen is uh, I still need to, uh, I'm still waiting on, I should say, the screens to put in the oil pan, and we'll talk about that uh, once we're getting into that part of the project. And uh, then we need to get a battery, we'll need to get the uh, ignition system firing up so that it's making fire, because uh, that's kind of important. And we'll also need to disassemble the fuel system on this thing to clean the carburetor out and make sure that we can, uh, with a tank, we're not going to use the fuel system on the car, but with a drop feed tank of some kind that we can get gasoline fed so that when we do crank it over, it obviously sucks the explosive stuff into the engine and makes it go boom, boom. So, uh, yeah, the car's been parked for 75 years and hasn't been run. We know we had engine problems. If you haven't seen previous episodes on this car, Check them out. Um, so, you know, this is a piece of family history here, and we're really excited to be, after all of these years, um, getting this thing back together and getting it to run. So we, we're really close, and uh, let's just get into what needs to be done today and stop talking. Just stop it. So here we are with the head and the oil pan. Uh, we need to get this screen out, which I haven't done. I did this one so that when I was getting ready to order the the screen I could uh, have a piece to measure but I need to cut this one out and then we need to just start doing the arduous task uh, that I have been dreading of scooping all the pooping out of the pan uh, so that's gonna be a crap job and also then we will also also then we will also also the also also we will be uh, cleaning out the passages and that as I said and we're gonna put some of these super clean products to work so if you haven't uh, been here for a while uh, Super Clean stepped up and has decided to allow us to feature some of their products on the channel. So thank you for that, Super Clean. So we're going to put some of their degreasing products to work uh, today on this episode and see how it goes. So 75 years of slime and goo looks like that. There's no way to clean underneath these screens without unsoldering this whole entire piece of the pan, which is something I really don't want to do. Um, and one of the screens was rusted out anyway, so we cut that one out. And uh, the recommendation from the experts is just simply to put stainless screen in here. So whether we weld them in, or solder them in, or braze them in, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but you can see the amount of sludge that we're getting out of here. This obviously needs to clean up and get out. So this is, as I've mentioned, it's a job I have been dreading. This part of it, not so much. The part that I'm really dreading is taking this up to the car wash because I don't have a power washer and blasting this knowing that I am going to get covered with this SH double toothpicks stuff. 
from head to toe, and I'm not really going to enjoy that at all. But there is so much of this crap in here that it's got to go. I mean, we can't put fresh oil in this and get this engine warm because it'll just get sucked right up into the oil pan or into the oil pump. So we got to get it out of there. I wasn't going to film all of this, but the more I thought about it, I realized, first of all, I know family would be interested in seeing this, and there's a lot of family watching this, but the second reason that I decided to go ahead and film this is there's a lot of tedium and boring tasks involved in getting an old car like this going, and even something as simple as cleaning an oil pan, if I skipped over this and just said I cleaned the oil pan, then you haven't seen a part of the process nor have an understanding of the amount of time it takes to even take an old car like this uh, and get it back on the road and get it running without doing an engine rebuild and so forth. So this is part of the revival process, if you will, of a car that's been parked for 75 years. Um, you know, hoping in two episodes here we're going to be doing an actual will it run after 75 years revival. Uh, video when we fire it for the first time and uh, I'm excited about that but uh, this is part of the tedium of this so I thought it was worth going ahead and sharing so uh, I want to go grab some more kerosene and then I'll talk to you while I'm doing a couple other things here. One thing I wanted to mention is if you're cleaning parts under no circumstances should you use gasoline. Uh, gasoline can flash and uh, use kerosene or diesel fuel. It's flammable but not explosive. And we can get into uh, fuel theory if you want on why it's not, but that's another subject for a different video, I think. Get back into my uh, former days as an automotive fuel system engineer and talk about fuels and how they work. And lots of stuff we can talk about, but I don't know that that's necessarily necessary, necessarily necessary for the necessity of necessitizing this necessary old project that we're working on. Wow. get you over here and let you see if we can. Look at the, de the debris in there, just the dirt. Um, so much dirt. It's all chunks and chunks of dirt. That's the crap we need to be concerned about. It's rust and dirt and, you know, all kinds of garbage in here from years and years and years. And uh, that's the stuff we need to get out of there. But it, the sludge is gone for the most part now. So what I'm gonna do next, well, we'll show you what I'm gonna do next. So the next step is I'm gonna take a little of this super clean degreaser and just spray it down and wipe it out with a rag as a preliminary to actually going and power washing this thing out. Let that kind of soak for a while, slosh it around. see it just dissolving that oil. This is particularly, I want to get it up in here. If I wanted to be clever, I could cut an access hole in here. Turn this back and see, I could cut an access hole up in here and then just weld a cover back on it again, but I don't think it's necessary. If I need to, I will. But just taking that super clean it's just taking that stuff right off. Uh, it's dissolving all that oil real well. So what will happen is I'll drain this out again. Uh, of course, I'm going to wipe it down as best as I can without being terribly thorough. It's just a matter of eating the elephant one bite at a time. Another thing that I've been doing that I didn't mention is just being doing an investigation of what's in this oil pan. Um, I heard a clunk when I was draining it the last time, and there was this little thing. I think it's just a seed but those are other things that I'm listening for is 
chunks of stuff that could potentially be in this engine. Um, so far, it's just dirt and grit and a seed. I have no idea. It's a really hard shell seed, I'll tell you that. So it's about seven, eight miles up to where the car wash is, and I'm going to the old crappy one because they don't mind if you wash parts there as long as they're not too greasy. Um, and again, I just try to share a day in the shop with you for whatever I'm working on, so this is part of the day. Um, as If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that. Um, but I really try to treat you like you're sitting next to me here in the truck, and this is what you're seeing, and this is where we're going. Uh, this is what we're doing. We're just about two miles from the car wash now, and now uh, we'll be getting there done. So, uh, That sucked as bad as I thought it was going to. Oh my goodness. I'm soaked, my feet are soaked, my pants are soaked, I got grease in my eyes, my glasses are trashed. <sighs> Gotta love it, isn't this fun? <sighs> but they're clean. Too trashed to really go anywhere. I need to go home and change my clothes and stuff. So uh, let's just get out of here and little comment here on the super clean products did outstanding as far as I'm concerned um, the things it didn't do were things that I didn't expect it to do and that is where there was really heavy grime that I didn't take time to scrape uh, that didn't come off and um, I really don't want to take every bit of that grime off anyway the way we're going with this car is more to preserve it than to restore it at this point. And I think um, having just a little bit of that patina on the uh, oil pan and on the head and even on the timing cover is good. So inside, of course, it cleaned up great. I'm fine with the way that turned out. And leaving a little bit of that dried on, baked on, 100 year old goo uh, is just fine. So the oil pan feels good inside. Um, obviously we still have to put those screens in, which I'm still waiting on. And I want to get out the blue wrench at some point here and just see if I can unbrace some of this and see exactly how this, what this material is. It, it almost looks like it's a, an epoxy, but I don't think it is. Um, I'm pretty sure it's metallic.
Yes, that is definitely solder. So that'll be simple to clean up. They're out now and uh, we'll get the rest of that cleaned up. We've got um, soldering, solder splash all over inside the oil pan. We'll have to get out of there, but nothing is stuck now. So we're good. Um, so as soon as the new screens come, maybe I'll just go ahead and solder those in, but uh, the new screens are gonna be stainless. So I'm not sure that's gonna be the best option. Uh, the reason for going stainless is the exact reason why we're replacing these. We not only had to take them out for cleaning, and quite frankly, had I realized the way they were put in, I could have just removed this screen just the way I did by just heating the solder up. But I plan on putting stainless in because this one, uh, if you remember from previous episodes, was rusted out. So if we used any kind of an iron-based, uh, steel-based screen to go in here in time, it's going to rust out again. We uh, don't want to have the screen rust out in the pan and then down the road uh, have pieces of junk get down in the bottom of the oil pan. It is really tempting to go ahead and pop this out of here, but my instincts tell me leave well enough alone. Uh, my dad always told me if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So uh, it's your fault, Dad, uh, that I'm not taking this out. <laughs> One thing I mentioned earlier is the, the oiler for the timing chain, which is right down in here. And I probably should have taken this off of there before, um, but I didn't think of it. Would have been easier if I had done it when the chain was off, but chain's on now. I'm not about to take it back off again. We'll get it out of there. It'll be fine. I just want to check the nozzle and make sure that it's not um, plugged. You know, I really don't want to take that tank chain off of there. It would be sure a lot easier if I did. Done that before. I could have come right there and just popped it off. Well, as you can see, I had to take the time machine off. It's too important not to, uh, not to have this thing checked. confident the oil galley is okay but I'm concerned about the tip of the nozzle here I'll show you what we got just a little nozzle thing that drips oil out so I want to get my air gun and blow that out make sure that that little tip isn't plugged the other thing that I didn't do last time was I meant to uh, gooer that gooer is that a word goo uh, anyway put some kind of lubricant all over that timing chain like uh, STP uh, or something like that so it's really sticky and keeps oil all over in that chain assembly as this engine fires up for the first time. Tip was definitely plugged solid. Big old chunk of crap came flying out and uh, let's get you over there so you can see. Let me get this up to you so you can see it. So you can see now how the end is open um, and I did blow into the engine as well and uh, it was probably just full of sludgy oil. So I blew a little bit of liquid wrench in there, not a lot. I just wanted to try to get something to loosen it up a little bit and uh, blew back and I can hear it gurgling now. So I'm confident that that oil galley is opened up now. So we can put this back on there. All right, got the timing chain back on. I just need to get it off that wooden block now. And uh, hopefully, yeah, let's uh, go there with it and see. So we're just rolling the engine over again uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I want to put some more goop on the chain once I get it past the spot where I have it. 
and the second is to get the timing marks double checked so about there should do it for our gooper it's just practical to uh, put this gooey crap on there get it down in there to lubricate everything really well before the uh, engine starts pumping its own oil okay good there's so much slop on there now it's hard to tell exactly where it is we'll find it it's just a little bitty dot so it's not easy to see probably up in here somewhere I haven't turned it that far yet my ancient eyes are not doing well to see it there it is, way up there. Okay, so we're way up here right now. So we got a ways to go. And it's off a tooth. This is why we check things. In my opinion, it is off a tooth. So probably when I put the chain back on, it slipped a little bit. So we should be able to jump that. Shouldn't be any big deal. I think that's got it right there. Once I get it snugged up, we'll find out. So I thought I'd bring you down here and show you where our timing marks are. Yeah, where are they? Right there and right here. So now they're lined up good. So everything's good. And I just got to clean the grime off of the gasket surface now that I got on there from that uh, zuppity zutz. And uh, we can put the timing cover on. I was fortunate that I happened to have um, some RTV. I forgot to get it when I went to town. So I just gotta figure out how to get this thing open. <laughs> it's, it's old, but it's still good in the tube. And uh, if you'll notice, I've left a little of the paper gasket on here. Um, that's by design. Uh, the reason I'm leaving that is that way uh, with the RTV, uh, when I need to take it back off, it won't come off as hard. Um, I've had good success with doing that in the past. So it was just one way that I thought would work um, to be able to use this material without it gluing on so hard that I would have one heck of a time getting it off later. I also just noticed that one of my dowel pins is popped in here. So I'm probably gonna wanna loosen that up and put that back in the block. Um, I'm a little nervous about that, but I'm gonna tap that gently and see if it will move. If it doesn't, I'm gonna leave it. Um, or, I mean, I will just see. I'm going to do that right now because I don't want to break this and I'd rather leave the dowel out than, um, than take a chance on breaking this material. So carefully, I'm going to do that right now over at the vise and see what happens. It actually moves quite nicely. I think tap that back into the block. So I'll need to get a dowel or something. A bolt. I don't think I have anything handy here. Punch. There we go. Perfect. I have a punch right here. Nope. It's not. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> so what happened in its history? Somebody, if you can see, somebody peened on it and 
yeah, I'm kind of knocked it over so it will not come out of there. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to leave it and just try to gently tap it back into the engine a little bit um, when I put it on the car. Again, I don't want to break this cover. I could pound that out of there maybe. I'm concerned. It's so thin here. As you can see, somebody hit on it. And uh, this is kind of the way things were done back in the day, unfortunately. Um, and it, it mushroomed it over and damaged the cover. And I don't want to crack that cover. I'd rather not have it in there at all. We'll see what I can do with it. Normally, you would just put a small bead uh, through the gasket mating surfaces and let it squish out, but I just spread it paper thin because the gasket that was in there was paper thin, and I really don't want it to glue hard. Um, I want it to just stick a little bit and seal it. Um, and keep in mind the context here. We're not dealing with a 500 or 1,000 horsepower high-performance engine that's going to have gobs of blow-by and uh, you know, high oil pressure and you know, it's, uh, it's the context of, of what this is. And so the ability to seal an engine of this vintage is not nearly as difficult as a high performance engine or even a modern engine in some ways. Um, so it doesn't need to be necessarily a high tech. Um, that's why a lot of these were just thin paper gaskets. Um, I didn't check flatness or anything on that. I'm not worried about it at this point. Um, Chances are we're going to have to play around with this engine uh, anyway and uh, may have to come apart again. All of this right now is to find out where we're at. Uh, there's a good chance we'll have to pull this engine out because the clutch is stuck, we're pretty sure. I can't believe it wouldn't be. Um, but right now the main goal is to see if this power plant works. So that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it, getting it together in the car, firing it up, um, seeing what it needs, and then we can evaluate at that point. Um, we'll talk about the next steps after we get this, uh, after we're done for today. But we got a ways to go here yet. And away we go. Everything is good in here, good to go. There we go. Yeah, good. Huh, the old pin kind of went into the block, so we're good. It's holding nicely. We'll get some bolts in it, tighten her down. Four. All right, I found the bolts and there were two that were stripped, so I'm going to replace those two bolts there. Um, and I counted all the other bolts we need and they're all right, so we have all the oil pan bolts, which are very similar but a bit shorter. So I will find two replacement bolts for that timing cover, but the ones that we need are obviously at the top and that's not going to be a big deal. So I can buzz this down and uh, get her together. great there still so I'm gonna just blow that off and I think we're gonna set the head on. The gasket needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Get that cleaned up. It's a solid shim copper gasket. Um, it's actually a tri-layer. looks in good shape. Again I can buy new parts but I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this one temporarily. I'm 99% sure it's gonna be fine and not leak. Uh, but again we're trying to fire this thing right now and these are not cheap. So just to save a few bucks, uh, we use this and just clean it up a little bit and uh, just put it back on there. So. Just in case a guy is wondering, there's the Victor part number for this gasket. Whether or not it's still available from Victor, it's been superseded. Not sure, I know they're available for sure uh, online, I've seen them, and they're like I said, they're not cheap. Um, so I used some super clean spray on this, 
and then went over it with a little prep saw and I got all the grease and oil off of it and uh, it's good, it feels clean, it's stained, but I don't care about that right now. And like I said, once this thing is closer to being done and on the road, it's a real simple job to pop the head off and throw a new gasket in there at the time if we need to. So no big worries about reusing the gasket at all here, it should be fine. So you can use either oil or grease on these bolts. I'm gonna use a little grease because it's just a bit thicker and they do tend to run into the coolant passages. Um, so not a lot, just a little bit, just to keep the threads lubricated. And again, grease is just a bit thicker. It's been a year and a half now, I believe that we've had this and the engine's been apart for close to that long so it's nice to see this coming back together again I was hoping to have it done in two years and I think we're still going to be on target to do that um, should be close which is good, which is great, which is awesome piece of zoots so all right, we got a crap ton of these to put in, so. Note to self, if you're gonna to talk to the camera, make sure it's not set to time-lapse. Okay, let's try again. Uh, all the bolts went in good, so a long time ago off camera. I spent, I've spent a lot of time working on this off camera, just doing piddly little stuff. One of the things I did was go through, chase down all of the threads in the block with a tap. Um, I didn't look at the bolts as I was putting them in, I was checking them. Uh, they were all fine except for this one. This one went in and would catch. And I really didn't want to run a die over them anyway. Um, but there's no way I'm going to run this in the block without running a die over it. And if it still doesn't clean up the way it should, and it should, um, then we'll, we'll use a different bolt. But uh, it's 90, you know, 95 year old bolt. And I was noticing the casting date on the block is April 16th or 18th, 1926. So. 95 years ago is when this block was cast. Um, so this was probably not an early uh, engine for this, if that date is right. Uh, this is probably a mid-year. They built it and shipped it to northern Michigan. Uh, so I'd be curious to know exactly when Great Grandpa bought this. So if anybody in the family knows that, uh, exactly the date that he purchased this car, I'd be curious to know that, uh, to see if it, and I could be reading that wrong also, so that could be a different casting number, but it looks like a date to me.
great work accomplished. Uh, we obviously got the timing cover done, we got the oil pan all cleaned up, we got the head back on, the spark plugs are screwed in. Uh, I'm going to put new plugs in it so they're not put in all the way and I really just put them in there right now to plug the hole so nothing stupid happens and something gets down in there. Um, but yeah, great thing. So I need to take this thing off and figure out what the heck it is. <laughs> I don't think it's an oil filter. Uh, it might be an oil reservoir. I'm just not totally sure. So we're going to take it off of there and get it cleaned up. Uh, I haven't taken time to research that or see if that's even something that's factory, but I, I kind of think it is. Um, I haven't spent as much time in my, in my service manual, which I have. I have a, two books, actually. My friend Chris uh, out in Oak, Iowa um, has a 26 Oakland Coupe, and he sent me a copy of uh, a repair manual, and I also have the factory service manual as well for this car, which is very thick. Um, so i got to get in there and see what that is. I haven't taken time to figure it out. It's either an oil reservoir or an oil filter or both. Not sure. But anyway, um, so we made lots of progress. There's uh, screens in the oil pan. Then we can pop the oil pan on, obviously. So hopefully those will get here soon. Um, I'll get the plugs ordered. Um, yeah, so what's coming next on the Oakland? Um, and this is exciting. Of course, we're going to fire it up as soon as we can. Um, yeah, that's going to happen, like I said, hopefully within the next couple of episodes, once I get the oil pan on. The next thing that needs to happen is we need to get wheels and tires on this car. So the uh, wooden spoke wheels probably need to be reconditioned. Um, I'm concerned about how dry they're going to be, and so we will probably go ahead and strip those down and clean them up. That's going to take some time. Um, probably going to go ahead and sandblast up the wheels and get those cleaned up real nice and then get new coker tires and wheels to put on it. So I'll reach out to coker here soon and see about getting those coming, but we're probably a couple months away on that. I would think that would probably be into the summer, but we'll see. I'll get dad to help me with those wheels. Uh, there's a lot to do on those to make sure they're right. So I wanna go through that with you guys in detail. Uh, my main concern is having a wheel come loose and the spoke come loose and then we could break something. And certainly, um, we could get somebody to make new. That's some, not something I could do. Um, there are specialty places in the country that make wooden wheels for cars like this. So uh, that's probably the direction we would go. But that's how far along we are. Um, so getting it fired soon and then getting wheels and tires on it. So it's uh, actually a little bit more mobile. You wouldn't believe how heavy this car is. It's, it weighs about 16 tons. Um, I can't hardly move it around in here on these little dollies by myself. That's how heavy it is. All right, let me gather my thoughts and see if there's anything else we need to talk about, and I'll be right back. Timing is just incredible. Uh, I just received an email from my rep at Super Clean, and she said to me, uh, how would you like to do a drawing for Super Clean products on the channel? Of course, we're working out the details of that right now, but that is coming, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we will have either a special episode uh, for a drawing, which is what I'm leaning towards, or we will work it into another episode here. But I think we might do a special episode that's just for the drawing. So if you would like to win some of that degreaser that I used today in the episode, uh, I think that's what we're going to be shooting for is to, to do a giveaway of some of their, their main original product, which is the degreaser. Um, let me know, but we will watch for that episode because that's coming soon. So what's coming next here on the channel? Uh, actually tomorrow, I believe, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, Becky and I will be uh, over here on the bead roller tipping the frame edges for the unibody frame that we're building for the 70 Challenger project, the Stitches project, if you remember that. Um, Stitches is what we've nicknamed our 70 Challenger because we are building a driver and stitching everything together on the chassis, uh, making it all by hand out of sheet metal. Uh, which is something that a lot of people don't do and uh, so if you're interested in seeing somebody do something out of the box tune in to the uh, 70 Challenger series. I think we're going to be on episode 38. I think we released episode 37 today. Uh, that car is going to be back on its feet also again in a few weeks. So as, as I've said, we're really banging on getting these two cars done. The 47 Ford, I want to be driving that this summer. There's not much that needs to be happening there. I need to get the wiring done and finish painting the grill, and uh, quite frankly, 
I can probably be driving that soon. It doesn't have a fuel system yet, and the wiring needs to be put in. But that's a weekend project for, other than the paint work, that's a weekend project. Also, the 68 Dark GTS Pro Street. A um, couple things to do on that, and I want to be driving that car this summer as well. So we should do some stuff with, uh, with those cars. Definitely going to have two scoops back on the road this year. It's already on the road. I just haven't driven it because the weather's been bad. So a lot of car activity coming on the channel for sure. As always, um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Um, hit the bell so you receive notifications. If you look down in the bottom left corner right now, there's a little logo, My Car Shop. You can just click that right now and go ahead and subscribe. And I might just stand here and force you to do it. No, I won't. We're on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, one of the things that I've been asking on the channel uh, just recently is uh, go over to our Facebook page and drop a picture. There's a thread over there of your projects and I wanna see your projects. So find that thread on the Facebook page and drop a, a picture in there <coughs> of the stuff you're working on. I know many of you uh, message me and make comments and email and so forth about the stuff you're doing and I'd like to see your projects. So shoot some pictures over there on Facebook, forward slash my car shop, easy to find. Also on Instagram, forward slash my car shop. And I think that's going to do it for today. So uh, at the end of the show, you're going to find two buttons. Uh, one over here on this side, I believe it is, that gives you the opportunity to subscribe. And then one over here that shows you another episode. So why don't you go ahead and click that and watch some more stuff here on the channel. And as always, guys, rock.